We live in a world of information. Most of us can hold access to everything we would ever want to know in the palm of our hand. However, there is a big distinction between information and knowledge. While information has its bonuses, knowledge is understanding. Knowledge is power, and today myself and my colleagues Jordan and Karen are here today to help Boxco empower their clients to better serve their customers through knowledge and through Boxco Insights. We were given three objectives today. We were given the objective of targeting corporate clients. So these are clients in a new sector for Boxco, small, small medium, and large-sized clients who don't necessarily need a market research firm, but they do need the data analytics that Boxco can provide. We are told to adapt an approach to the needs of these new clients. And finally, we are looking to grow Boxco's size by increasing its number of leads and maximizing its sales. Now, we are doing this through focusing our efforts on the retail banking industry. This is an industry that is seeing great change in terms of how they interact with their consumers as consumers are becoming more cognizant of their options. We want to showcase our benefits to the retail bank banking industry through Boxco Insights. Boxco Insights is our suite of insights from Boxco, which includes uh, content marketing, personalized sales services, and assistance with data analytics. And finally, we want to grow through scaling this strategy. Retail banking is an industry that allows us for great scale, uh, not only in the industry itself, but also in other industries as Boxco moves forward. Now, why retail banking? Well, there's a very important, uh, there's a very large importance placed on customer lifetime value and on security. People want security of their information, but people are also inclined to switch banks. People, if they're not satisfied with their service, will move to the next bank, and banks don't want that to be happening. Banks are also becoming increasingly brand focused. Where it used to be that banking was an entirely serious industry, banks want to be recognized for their brand, and they want to be sure that that brand is maintained. And finally, there's a trend towards technology in banking. So be this with automatic tellers or be this with online banking, banks are moving into the 21st century just like uh, their clientele. Why Boxco Insights? Well, Boxco Insights will allow us to demonstrate the value of Boxco, and that's something that's going to be incredibly important moving into the corporate sector, as corporations may not completely understand the necessity of data and data analytics, uh, as well as the survey technology that Boxco provides. We want to ensure to increase our exposure, and we'll do this through our content marketing campaign. And we want to move towards smart marketing, so consumers no longer want to be advertised to, and nor to companies. We want to show consumers the importance of the data and allow them to make the smart choice in going with Boxco. And finally, why are we starting small? Well, we're starting in retail banking in the branch sector, and that's because of the personalized approach of Boxco. This allows us to really attract these branch managers, these people who are uh, directly interacting with clientele, and allow us to benefit them in the best way possible at the smallest scale. We will also start small because it allows us to scale upwards. This is an incredibly scalable strategy, um, and it does allow us to move into uh, entire corporate banks as well as other <coughs> industries. And finally, we do see that we have the opportunity to evaluate. So by piloting this project at a smaller scale, we can see where we need to make changes while we're moving forward. Today, myself and my colleagues will take you through Boxco uh, in the industry perspective, where we stand in the industry today, as well as who the client we intend to attract is, these retail banks. We then want to take you through Boxco Insights, our strategy to approach and attract these clients, and why Boxco Insights works in a little more detail. 
Finally, we'll end with how we want to look through uh, to year one, and we'll finish up with some key takeaways. I'm going to pass it to Jordan to talk about Boxco today. Yeah, so we're sorry, really looking at Boxco's position as it is right now. <clears throat> so first of all, Boxco faces three main types of competitors. So first of all, the basic survey software like um, SurveyMonkey, which is fee or very, very low cost. However, it has very limited features. It's only online hosting, and it has really uh, limited data analytics as well. Now, there's also the more advanced survey software, such as Qualtrics, which is moderate cost. There's some design, some data analytics uh, component, and uh, also has some great reporting and output units. And lastly, there's also the uh, marketing research firms, which are much more high cost, uh, but also offer really a tailored service as well. Now, we really see the future of Voxel's competition coming from the surveys like Qualtrics, because we think that they are in a similar price range and have a, a bit of a similar uh, product offering as well. So how can Boxo differentiate itself from these three types of competitors and especially advanced survey software? First of all, when we look at client needs in the marketplace, we have things like customizability, security, price, price flexibility, as well as some valuable insights. So what Rachel said about the difference between information and knowledge, actually understanding what this means and how we can leverage this in the marketplace. And we can see that these four needs are all competitive advantages for a box. So they're all core competencies, and they're also something that you do very, very well. So for example, customizability in terms of designing, creation, creating the tools for ease of use, uh, meeting the need with uh, both on-site uh, hosting options for maximum security, as well as a SAS uh, server software opportunities, empowering your safe salespeople to, for them to negotiate price on their own and to really deliver some tailored solutions to all your customers. And also that, uh, really it's more than just data collection, it's also data usage and this, this use of knowledge. <clears throat> and now my colleagues will talk to you a bit more about uh, the Voxco online site. So a quick look at why we've been for tackling retail banking. And we have highlighted four key issues that we realize what we can offer to this uh, client. So first, they, they're looking for new and innovative, way to, innovative ways to retain customers. So as retail marketing has become increasingly more competitive, these customers need to figure out ways how they can retain their own customers. So how can retail banking retain their own uh, bank users? Secondly, they also have a high need for security. security. So their information is very valuable. And how can Voxel offer these secure options for them to use our services? Thirdly, they also need to cater to a broad customer base. Because retail banking is so applicable across all different regions, we believe that we'll be able to offer um, very broad stroke uh, data services to help them with their own needs. And finally, competitive pricing. Because once again, it's such a competitive market, how can Voxel offer competitive pricing to make sure that we satisfy their own needs as well? So the client, and understanding who exactly the retail banker is. So we've broken it up into three different segments, and we have the client, the customer, and the consumer. The client, we've noted, is the retail banks themselves. So these are the branches. These are the people who are actually going to be purchasing this, uh, this service by Boxco. And these, these include target industries and the entrance to the initial corporate market. Secondly, we have the customer. So this is upper level management. These are the individuals who make the decisions about whether or not to invest in Boxco, how to leverage the information that Boxco is able to provide them. And thirdly, the consumer. So these are the actual individuals who use this information who take the data and uh, investments that Boxco provides and who are able to benefit from these insights. So a quick look on what each segment wants to better understand how we can adapt Boxco services to tailor to their needs. So client, they're look, really looking for individuals who are tech savvy because the retail banking is becoming increasingly more competitive. They need to differentiate themselves from their other competitors. So they need to distinguish themselves and they need to really uh, tailor themselves as a modern uh, company. Uh, secondly, the customer themselves. So this really emphasizes the good value of pricing. So how can we provide value added with uh, limited, uh, without too much competitive pricing so they don't feel as if they're under any strain. And finally, simple and usable data. Because they already probably have their own data analytics use, we really want to provide ease of transition from their own services to what data uh, Boxco can offer with Boxco Insights. So now I'll pass it on to Rachel to talk about the strategy. So now that we've demonstrated the core competencies of Boxco and the client that we intend, we want to attract, how are we actually going to attract this client? Well, we see the main strategy moving forward being Boxco Insights. Boxco Insights will be a three-part strategy, beginning with content marketing. 
So this will be where we show what Box Co can really do. Box Co currently publishes blog posts and does create content, but we want to have this in a format that is easily deliverable to these future clients and these prospective leads uh, in order to really showcase what it is that collecting data with Box Co survey software can do for you. So we want to have uh, industry insights as well as trends in data and client testimonies. So our current clients are very satisfied with Box Code services and we want future clients to be aware that this is something that can really provide benefit for their company. We will distribute this content through both digital and print media. So distributing it through digital media allows more people access and print media does really allow us to target these new leads specifically, ensuring that we are getting the information out to people who really we want it in the hands of, uh, as well as complementing it by this online model that allows you to access later. And we will do this in a quarterly fashion. So this publication will be a quarterly publication of industry insights, of various client reviews, and of the trends that uh, Boxco does see in data analytics industry and in survey, uh, survey software industry. So we do know that this is an industry that's very much moving at a fast pace and it's becoming more and more vitally important for almost all industries to use. So we want to make sure that we are on top of those trends and we're showcasing those trends. This is really going to help us reach current and new clients to establish a reputation at Boxco as a leader in uh, what we do. So a leader in this collection of data and a leader in this survey software. We then move into company insights. So this is something that Boxco does exceptionally well and we want to continue it and improve upon it. So tailoring solutions for, ki for client needs. As we move into this corporate sector, we're going to see that clients have different needs than the clients we currently have, but we want to make sure that they are uh, getting exactly what they want out of their investment. So if they don't necessarily understand the value that, that they may be deriving from purchasing this survey software, we want to make sure that we give them the best possible value. So what are the products that would be best for them? What part of Boxco Online could they best use to, uh, in order to establish um, a better relationship with their own customers? We will do this through salesperson assigned to a client and regular meetings and checkups. So we are going to be uh, making slight modifications to the team that will be dealing with corporate partners and uh, Karen will speak to that in a moment. Uh, but essentially we will have a, a Box, Boxco Insights team and this salesperson will be a part of that team. And we will be doing this all throughout the process. So pre-sale we want to make sure that we're catering to client needs uh, in order for them to actually purchase the product. Uh, we want to make sure that during the actual usage of the product, clients feel comfortable with what they're using and they feel as though the solution is right for them. And post-sale, we'll be making sure to check out to make sure this is a long-term partnership and not just a one-time relationship where they don't use the services again. And finally, we look at customer insights. So we want to make sure that we don't just give our clients information. They are given knowledge. We want to make sure that we are able to give them, uh, not only to give them the data that they need, but show them how to best use it. So this would be done through uh, speaking to clients and finding out what their goals are, as well as, as aiding them in going through the data that they actually do collect. So a big issue that we saw is going into the corporate, uh, corporate side of things is that they may not know what to do with these thousands of numbers with all of this client data. That's something that Boxco does know how to do. Now, we want to make sure that we differentiate ourselves from sort of the market research consulting side of things. So we want to emphasize that this will not be in a consulting perspective. This will be in a aiding our client perspective. So if our client has questions, if our client doesn't know how to best use the data they're collecting, or if our client has issues with what they are collecting when they are collecting it, that's something where Boxco can step in. And that's something that will really help us to differentiate from our competitors. We will do this through the salespeople as well, as well as this uh, VI and Boxco Insights team and the client working together. So that's the, the main portion of all of the insights is that we make sure that the client is involved in every step of the way, that they feel comfortable with the services that they're using and that they feel as though they're deriving the greatest value for their money. <clears throat> yes, now let's go a little bit more as to why we specifically picked this strategy. First of all, we really want to emphasize this value creation of Boxco because this is really what we believe sets us apart from the rest of our competitors. And so the three main categories of things we do in this category is first of all to uh, simplify data. So anyone can gather data, but if we really want to put this emphasis on knowledge, simplifying data so we can take away these, these trends and learn how to leverage this data as well. We also want to offer some valuable insights as Rachel mentioned previously, and we really want to build these long-term customer relationships as well. Now, it's, we know that Voxel is active all over the world, and something that uh, we really want to focus on for a strategy is not only able to scale it domestically, but worldwide. So the retail banking industry has some uniform worldwide characteristics that allow us to really export this strategy quite easily. So first of all, in times of key issues, there's a universal need for banks all over the world to better understand the customers and to keep this retention rate very high. 
it's also an industry that's very mature all over the world, so there's high profit potential, all of, no matter which country. And lastly, there's also very uniform business practices, which means that there would be low scaling costs. So obviously, we adapt to every single client, but the fact that it's an um, industry that's very uniform worldwide, which really minimizes our cost to export across the world. Now, as for the financial returns, we started by looking at increase uh, by 20 new leads per week. So we're really reaching that goal of moving from 20 leads per week to 40 leads per week. And uh, the reason behind this is because we have a strategy that really has a high visibility. So first of all, the fact that we have a digital document makes us really easy to uh, share, share the document with a lot of our, our potential leads. Also, the fact that it's a recurring release creates a new recurring touch point with the customers and uh, really maintains us top of mind awareness. And also the fact that this is very valuable information to you that kind of actually seek out this information. So this is how we justify our 20 new leads per week or 1,000 new leads per year. Now we estimate about a six to seven uh, percent conversion rate, which we believe is very conservative. Uh, so that would translate to about 60 to 70 new clients, mainly bank branches. And we estimate at um, $7,500 per client. Now we know that this is a bit lower than your traditional starting point, but we really want to start with a penetration strategy in order for us to gain critical mass in the retail banking sector. And once we have critical mass within these branches, we can then sell it at the headquarter level, at the corporate level, which would be much bigger contracts. So we're really going for the penetration, first of all. And so this would give us revenues about $450,000 to $525,000 and a ROI between 2.25 and 2.63. Now we're gonna give you the walk through the how we're really going to implement this strategy. So a quick look at the VI team, the Vox Code Insights team. So these are the individuals that will really be helping us push forward this new strategy that we've created. First of all, we have a new team structure, a Vox Code Insights team. So this is a completely new team where we're um, planning on hiring two new individuals. So these individuals will be extremely data-driven, they will know how to use this information, but we're also going to pair them with one existing Vox Code employee, given the 55 that we already have. And we want to establish this on a regional base because we want the insights to be very tailored to the specific Secondly, the objective of the team is to, one, increase awareness and to provide better service. And so this leads directly into their team tasks, which is the content creation of the quarterly publication and also supporting the personal sales. So the objective of the VI team is to, one, help with the actual, create the actual publication that will be released each year, uh, each year on a quarterly basis, in order to reach a large mass, a large, larger market. And secondly, also to create a better relationship among these uh, Voxco clients so that we're able to better support them and offer any assistance in terms of how they manage their data. Now we're looking at we're looking at the sales cycle today. So today the sales cycle includes pre-sales, which are touch upon Voxa websites, cold calls, and also the trade shows. And then this all leads into the salesperson, which negotiates the actual deal with the clients. And finally, the post-sale includes follow-up and long-term relationship building. With the new Vox in, Voxco Insights, we've developed um, a slightly adjusted uh, sales cycle. So this includes the content creation and the publication. So the publication, on top of all the existing sales cycle, uh, pre-sale insights, we're gonna be able to target a large market and have them reach out and be aware of what Voxco does prior to actually reaching out to them. In terms of the, during the sale with the actual VI salesperson, this salesperson will be helping the existing salesperson and making sure that the um, pitch that we provided them is really tailored to the actual client. And finally, with the post-sale, because of the VI team, we're going to be able to have a stronger relationship with these customers. And since we have this information and this data-driven uh, research team behind, back behind the scenes, we're really going to be allowing for superior after-sale and emphasizing on customer loyalty with our services. So a quick look at the budget, budget allocation with everything. <coughs> we have assigned approximately 150,000 for the VI team, and this includes <coughs> approximately a 75,000 uh, salary for each individual on each new hire for the VI team. Um, a publication, which we've allocated approximately $20,000. 20, and finally, the training. So this is a workshop training that we really want to emphasize for the existing personal sales members because they play such an integral role to the actual um, development and the relationship with the box code, <coughs> sorry, sales cycle, we really want to emphasize that they are aware of how to pitch um, properly and to provide a really uh, conversational uh, relationship with these kind of clients. And I'm going to pass it back to Rachel to close it up. We live in a world today that's driven by information, but we believe that the offering that Moscow can really leverage in order to differentiate from competitors is knowledge. We believe that it's important for clients and especially these corporate clients to understand not only the information they are given, but to understand their customers.
understand how they can best use this, uh, this information that they collect, and to understand how they can leverage this information for better services and better customer lifetime values for themselves. Today we were given three objectives. To target corporate clients, to alter the approach to meet the needs of these new clients, and to increase leads and maximize sales. And through our Boxco Insights strategy, we will be focusing on the retail banking industry, an industry that is very scalable and that does require these kinds of services. We will showcase the benefits of Boxco as well as the value that Boxco can add through Boxco Insights. And we will also use this program to differentiate from competitors. So what Qualtrics, what SurveyMonkey does not do is show you how to use your data. There's a big difference between having data and knowing what to do with it. And Boxco, because of their standing in the industry and because of their knowledge, will be able to help their clients to better leverage this data. And finally, we want to scale this sales strategy from the branch model to headquarters. So as Jordan spoke to, we want to work at a penetration level at first, uh, explaining that lower price point. And we want to make sure that we then are able to build up in order to scale this strategy to the best of its abilities. We see Boxco as having a lot of opportunity to grow and to make sure that they move into the corporate industry with what these clients are requiring. Boxco offers what the clients need and we need to get that information, turn it into knowledge and bring it to our clientele. We now invite any questions. Um, well, thank you for your presentation. It was uh, very insightful and I like the name, Boxco Insights. It's a good one. Um, I do have a couple questions. Um, I think it was Jordan who yes. mentioned simplifying data. Yep. Can you elaborate a little bit on that as to how you see this from the, you know, inside Boxco, how can we simplify data knowing that we're not the market research firm, really the technology provider at this point? Yeah, so the way that we saw it is that we think there is an abundance of information available everywhere. And so it's easy to get drawn out by all this information. It, you don't have someone like Boxo to guide you through what are the key takeaways or, or the, for example, the dashboards that you build as well. Mm -hmm. So we think that these, these values really help to simplify all the information that one can collect from a, a survey provider like Baltrix or like SurveyMonkey. Allows us to get to really the key takeaways and then transform these key takeaways into, uh, from no information into knowledge. And this kind of strategy, um, from your point of view, would this be uh, put in place through professional services of Boxco or would it be those two Box Point Sites people really in charge of working with the client on this? Uh, yeah, so we think that it's um, especially going to be with the, uh, it can be from Box itself, but we really saw it as Box being very adaptable to the different client needs. And we also saw it as something that Box already did. So we saw that it's uh, it's going to simplifying data to presenting some key takeaways, like in the dashboards that you presented in the, in the appendices. Uh, it was really a great advantage and something that we wanted to continue to leverage moving forward, they continue to push to these new retail banking clients moving forward. Thank you. Um, I also had a question regarding uh, penetration into yes. the banking uh, retail market. It's definitely definitely a good vertical for mm -hmm. us um, because of the security needs and as you said, you know, uh, you know that branding, building that loyalty is crucial for them. Um, you talked about, I can't remember which one, I think it was Lauren, uh, Rachel, Rachel, um, penetrating at the branch level? Yeah, so we really want to look at the branch level first. So we're, we see that uh, branches for a lot of these retail banks are run somewhat internally. Of course, there's always the corporate goals and there is the higher level strategy, but we do see the opportunity to penetrate at this lower level. This is something that a lot of software as service companies do. So if you look at, say, mm -hmm. Dropbox, they went first directly to the employees. They made sure that the employees wanted to use their service and that they got hooked on it and then moved into the higher level management once they had the employees at that level. We see the same sort of model uh, with this branch to the actual headquarters model. So we're seeing that the branches, while they're not simply employees, they do have somewhat of their own internal structure. It's a great opportunity for us to move in as we can connect with, say, the, the manager of a branch on LinkedIn. We can find this person. We can find out who we really need to be speaking to. And rather than, say, speaking to simply C-level executives right away when they have no idea why they should use this service or if it's implementable, we thought moving at a lower level where we can showcase the value is the best way to then move into uh, the entire banking industry. It's an interesting approach that I didn't think of just because, you know, if you think of the price, we're about ten to 20000 mm -hmm one contract so does that mean that every branch would need to invest that amount rather than you know building it at a larger level and using that economy of scale in terms of the price per complete and 
Um, so that's also where the price flexibility really comes in, where we thought was one of the core competencies of Voxco. So enabling Voxco's salespeople to really cater to what these clients need. So if we do find that uh, the clients are not willing to make this investment right off the bat, there is these uh, ways we can cater. So by on the basis of how much they use it, on the basis of actual success of the product. Uh, we also see this first year as being a pilot program. So we have one year where we want to roll out these branches and see how much we can expand. And that's the great part about starting small is that we can then draw back, see if we need to make any changes and modify it before we move into a, a larger scale environment. Thank you. And I have one last question for you, Karen. Um, you guys talked about building that report, that publication. I think that's def definitely a good uh, starting point because we definitely have to establish ourselves as thought leader if we want, really want to go after the retail banking industry. You know, we have to be out there and be thought leaders for them. Um, do you feel like that one publication will be enough to get to that place? Sure, so definitely that's why we want to have a quarterly publication. So we want to make sure that it's a recurring system. And simply uh, also how uh, McKinsey has their reports and Deloitte has their reports. We really want uh, Voxco to establish themselves as a leader with the information that they are able to provide and with the insights that the importance of why data analytics is so uh, valuable in today's company. So the reason why we believe a publication is very important and we aren't too concerned about whether it leads the company um, simply because a quarterly publication is very reoccurring and it will be, it will be region based. So as Rachel mentioned earlier, because we are focusing on a test market in Canada, we want to establish the success of this first and then if possible, we'll replicate it to other regions on an international basis. Okay, thank you. That's all for me. Thank you. I only wanted to add that your uh, presentation was astonishing and I would love to have any uh, information on the potential market value that you estimated for the specific uh, market that you uh, identified. For the retail, I, am I allowed to answer? No, that's not. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I took too much time. No, no, no. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so much.